Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a theme that I am very personally acquainted with, one of, I think, the big startup and tech themes of the moment, which is agent marketplaces. According to TechCrunch sources, AWS is launching an agent marketplace as early as next week in partnership with Anthropic. The reports are that the marketplace will be unveiled next Tuesday at the AWS Summit. Now, not much here is known, but it's presumed that the marketplace will allow startups to offer their agents directly to enterprises through AWS infrastructure. It is very clearly an agent gold rush right now, not just in terms of the agents themselves, but also in terms of agent infrastructure. Earlier in the week, Microsoft announced a partnership with Replit to integrate Vibe coding more closely into Azure infrastructure. Salesforce and ServiceNow have also been experimenting with their own marketplace offerings. And I think it's a pretty safe assumption at this point that any company that has a current marketplace of offerings for the enterprise is going to bring agents into that as well. We are still very early in figuring out how agent distribution and services should work. One of the challenges of agents is that they inherently require so much customization, especially when it comes to enterprise deployments. These are not off-the-shelf technologies. And although they will become more plug-and-play over time, even in their simplest version, they're more complex than most enterprise software of the past. The reaction to this so far is mostly a head nodding, yep, makes sense. AI engineer Moad writes, smart move bundling Anthropic with AWS's massive enterprise reach. They're basically creating a distribution machine for cloud-powered agents while taking a cut of every sale. The real question, will enterprises actually buy AI agents from marketplaces, or is this just tech giants playing copycat? Nobody's proven this model works yet. To be honest, that question is one I've thought a lot about, and I'm not really sure. I think that the short answer is, there are definitely going to be agent marketplaces. There will be lots and lots of very lightly customizable agents that, especially when it comes to individual consumer users or even individual enterprise users, it will make sense to have that sort of marketplace access. This is the sort of app store for agents idea. When it comes to larger deployments, marketplaces for enterprises might be a useful browsing or gallery type of experience, but I don't think marketplaces that we have in mind, which is basically a model of a consumer marketplace, are going to be the thing there. Now, part of our bet at Super Intelligent is that something that is going to require a marketplace is all of the services and infrastructure that sit around agents. Companies are going to need people who have experience with agent deployment, setup, monitoring, etc., to help them get up and running, or at least they will decide that that's a shortcut rather than just figuring out it for themselves. And that type of talent and skill set is extremely apt to be organized in a marketplace. In any case, frankly, I'm glad to see lots and lots of different shots on goal when it comes to this. What's clear is that there is immense desire to get agents into the hands of companies right now as fast as possible, and whatever helps that along, even if it ends up being just an intermediate model or something that helps us figure out the actual approach, I think is going to be valuable. Now, one more piece of news around Amazon and Anthropic. Amazon is reportedly considering another multi-billion dollar investment into the company. Amazon has already pumped $8 billion into funding into Anthropic, representing about half of their fundraising to date, but Anthropic has done nothing but get more competitive since then. Its centrality to the rise of coding agents has put them in a hugely advantaged position, and yet they are going to continue to need copious amounts of resources to compete. The story in the Financial Times is very kumbaya and all about how the companies are already working together to pitch customers, etc., etc. Next up today, a big market milestone. Earlier in the week, NVIDIA very temporarily jumped above $4 trillion in market cap, the first company to do so. Now, it has come down slightly since then, but I think it's very telling based on where we are that it was an AI company that hit that milestone for the first time. Some more substantive news out of NVIDIA, the company is preparing to launch a new AI chip for the Chinese market as CEO Jensen Huang sets off for another Beijing visit. The Financial Times reports that Blackwell-based chips designed to meet export controls are set for release as soon as September. The chips are a version of the RTX Pro 6000 GPU, which is a prosumer or workstation product. The U.S. market version costs around $12,000 per unit, which is far below the roughly $70,000 price tag on the top of the range GB200 chips. In addition to being a much less performant GPU, the Chinese market versions will ship without high bandwidth memory or NVLink, which is NVIDIA's ultra-fast networking solution. These components have been a big part of the puzzle in creating large coherent training clusters that can integrate 100,000 chips. Now, the Financial Times reports that these chips are currently compliant with U.S. export controls, But given how fast those goalposts can shift, it's not entirely clear what that actually means. Still, NVIDIA is sticking to their view that locking China out of US-made AI chips is the wrong strategy. In a statement, the company said, With the current export controls, we are effectively out of the China data center market, which is now served only by competitors such as Huawei. China has one of the largest populations of developers in the world, creating open-source foundation models and non-military applications used globally. While security is paramount, every one of those applications should run best on the US AI stack. 
The news comes as CEO Jensen Huang prepares to travel to Beijing next week. He will be in town to appear at the International Supply Chain Expo, which is one of the largest events of the year for China's tech and industrial community. FT sources said he's also set to meet with top government officials. Jensen sits in a very interesting position. Not only is he right in the middle of the dominant tech trend of our time, he's also right in the middle of arguably the most important geopolitical struggle of the moment. NVIDIA has seen its Chinese market share drop from 95% to 50% this year as export controls tightened. And although Jensen has been defiant against White House policy to choke off AI access, he's also serving as something of an intermediary between Washington and Beijing. In fact, Huang met with President Trump on Thursday ahead of the China trip. No sources were willing to speak on background about the conversation, and neither the White House or NVIDIA put comments on the record. Some people speculate that this was about Jensen trying to get reassurance that the chips would be approved before he goes on that trip, but the more tinfoil hat theories have him play more of a diplomatic role. Speaking of chips, TSMC records another big jump in revenue as the AI chip booms. The Chinese chipmaker posted 39% annualized revenue growth in the second quarter, outstripping expectations. Now, TSMC sits upstream of NVIDIA and other chip designers in the supply chain, so many view its financials as a leading indicator for final demand. And current demand growth is almost entirely coming from AI. The numbers were soft in the mobile and consumer segments, which still make up the bulk of TSMC's business. But in addition to skyrocketing demand from NVIDIA, TSMC is also servicing growing new orders from Intel as they begin to outsource production. James E. Thorne, the chief market strategist at Wellington Altus, writes, AI spending keeps chugging along, so much for the Cassandras calling for the end of the AI boom. Indeed. That, though, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.